So now we've talked a lot about viscosity. These are the things we're going to check. So let's see what, what viscosity looks like a little more closely. Viscosity is a measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. The more a fluid resists, the higher the viscosity. And so uh, honey and water. Honey resists flow more than water does. Water will flow more readily. Honey has a higher viscosity than water. Now, the poise, and we're going to look at some charts. This is going to get interesting, I think. <clears throat> the poise is the fundamental unit of measure for viscosity. It's like saying degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius are the, is a fundamental unit of temperature. Okay? Poise is the fundamental unit of viscosity. Okay? With poise, gravity is not a factor. You can measure the viscosity of a fluid on, on outer space. Okay? And in fact, that property of a fluid is absolute. It doesn't matter what, what gravity is doing to it. Okay? Now, however, and, and one poise equals obviously 100 cent poise, because scented poise in the range that we work in for flex wings, scented poise is the useful unit, not the poise. It's not as useful. So we've agreed in this industry, the viscosity is in scented poise. Now, and viscosity is important to all ink types. All ink types. Viscosity is important. How do you measure viscosity? Okay, I this. Okay, good. You can use a lab instrument like this here. This is not something you're likely to see in a flexible press release <laughs> unless you have some sort of peculiar sophisticated thing you need to do. But basically this thing, a, 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 right here, a small uh, propeller-like thing goes into ink and it rotates. And the more resistance that fluid imparts to that rotation, the higher the viscosity. It's a very sophisticated device for measuring viscosity. You're not going to be interested in that on the, on the pressure. What you're probably going to be interested in is the most common tool used to measure the viscosity of flex wings and compression, which is a dip cup. And these are various types. There's a, <clears throat> these, are, these are manufactured by Darko, these are two, these are uh, the Easy Series Zon Cup. Zon Cup in my country is the most common cup used. Okay? But there's also a Fisher, there's a Ford Cup. There's an ISO cup, a standard four cup, there's a shell cup, and there's a shell cup. And there's all there's different viscosity, the types of cups to measure viscosity. And basically you you dip the dip cup in the ink, you pull it out, you measure how long it takes that liquid to come to, to come out, and that time, the efflux time, correlates to a viscosity. The longer the time, the higher the viscosity. It takes longer to come out. Now, with dip cups, gravity is a factor. You cannot measure viscosity with a dip cup in outer space. It doesn't want to flow. It just wants to stay right where it is. Unless you accelerated that cup backwards, it's not, nothing's going to happen. So what's happened is a stoke has been derived that factors in gravity, okay? So one, there's a relationship between the stoke and the poise. And one stoke, just like one poise equals 100 cent poise, one stoke equals 100 cent stokes. And cent stokes are what are used in the published charts that you will be provided by these dip cup manufacturers that allow you to correlate the amount of time it takes for the ink to come out of that cup with a viscosity in centiscopes, and if you know the specific gravity of the ink, you can correlate that to a center points. Okay? Okay. 
this is something, not to knock anybody, I've looked in flexor principles and practices, which is like the Bible of flexor, excellent reference source. It mentions the Zon cup, but it makes no distinction between an easy series or a signature series, and I'm going to tell you what that means right now. I asked ink manufacturers, I said, hey, Mr. Ink Manufacturer, what should I measure my water-based ink with? They say a number three Zon cup, and they never say easy or signature. Even the ink people are ignorant to what I'm about to share with you. So we have to be careful. It just so happens that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, right here, this is his guard code easy cut. And then guard code Zon signature cup. Okay? They're both Zon cups. The easy cup is an engineered improvement over the signature series. The signature series remains in circulation because there's a legacy of people that have established their viscosities with the signature series. So to Folks that are already using the signature series, I advise them, no problem, stay with that. The folks that are, have not been measuring the viscosity and want to start doing that, I would say use the easy because it's an improvement, but now watch. It just so happens that for water-based ink, a number three cup tends to be used. That's something that I always confirm with my ink manufacturer. But a number three cup tends to be used for water-based ink, and you be too. Now, these are both Zon cups, but you'll note that, and by the way, the amount of time is what I'm interested in right now. And it's about, let's say about uh, 19 seconds, okay? 19 seconds with the easy cup correlates to 162.62.2 centistokes. But it's 18.8 .8 with the other one. So, and, it's, and the problem manifests itself worse with the number two cup, which tends to be used for solvent basing. So a normal salt, uh, uh, efflux time range for water-based and uh, solid basic is about 25 seconds. 25 seconds uh, with a number two correlates to 41.4. However, the signature series is 19.9. So, synopsis. If the stoke or the center poise is the absolute measure, that is what I'm interested in. The, the efflux time is an, and, the, and the cup use is an indirect means at arriving at the absolute unit of measure of poise. And here I've got 25 seconds and here I've got 19 seconds. So if I shoot for 25 seconds with a number two, I'll have a set of scopes of 41.4. However, if I shoot for that same 25 seconds with a number two signature series, it correlates to a 74.3 viscosity. The short story is there is ignorance in the field in this regard. We need to be aware of that. And it's a significant, a potentially significant difference. So we need to understand which cup we're using, why. And the best thing to do is communicate with your ink vendor and ask them explicitly, exactly, how are you measuring your, your, the viscosity? Which, you know, which cup are you using and what's my range that I'm shooting for? Besides the dip cup, you need a stopwatch and thermometer, okay? And you
You want to measure according to the instructions of the manufacturer. And in fact, Garco, and I, I don't have a preference, by the way, but these cups are so prevalent in our industry, that's why I mention it this way. But I have no loyalties or no preference to any of these things. My interest is, what does my hate value use? So we speak the same language, okay? Temperature is a factor, and so you want a thermometer, and you're timing it, and you want a stopwatch. And now you do not want a cell phone. You do not want a wristwatch. You want a stopwatch that you don't have to look at. Because what you're going to do is you're going to focus on the stream. I don't know why this picture is at an angle, but you see that there's a stream of ink coming out. This is in process of being measured. So when I dip that cup in the ink, I have my stopwatch in hand. I'm not looking at the stopwatch. I'm not looking at my cell phone where I need to touch it. I'm looking at here. When I pull that up, I can push the button on the stopwatch without looking. You want to hit the stopwatch. When that stream breaks, I hit the stopwatch. It's very difficult to do with a cell phone. And it's difficult to do with a watch. So you want to stop. Now here's the formula I was interested in before. The centipoid is, is the absolute unit of measure. Centiscopes factor in gravity because factor gravity is a factor with dip cuts. And centipoise equals centiscopes times specific gravity. And specific gravity is the ratio. Specific gravity is the ratio of the density of a fluid or the mass of a fluid relative to water. So, uh, and that varies. Some inks are very heavy, like white, and its specific gravity is higher than black, which is a very light ink. Okay? So they will even behave differently. And sometimes among inks, uh, for example, um, uh, now, you know, you, you don't understand you say so many seconds. It, it, can, it can depend on color. Fluorescent colors, for example, have very large pigment size. It's the nature of the color in order for us to see it. The pigment is big, so it creates greater resistance to flow. So the per that ink will perform correctly at a higher viscosity than my black. See, it's starting to get a little more detailed here. Now we're not just saying across the board the same number of seconds for all inks. We might start to parse out some things. Not all inks require the same viscosity. They could be, a, a, within a certain margin, they could be different. <clears throat> All right, that's it. You'll find out the exact cup to use, and there are differences among <laughs> cups, and that's what we get to. Controlling viscosity, you want to measure it and adjust it. You can't control what you don't measure, okay? You want to establish an optimal range. It starts with your ink printer's recommendation, and it can be whatever comes in the door, okay? But then you might adjust that. You might establish and say, whatever he says is the optimal range, or you might find in your particular environment, you want to play with it a little bit, and you establish an optimal range of viscosity. And then you check the viscosity frequently enough to keep it within that range. If your range is from here to here, but your viscosity comes up here, you've gone too long without checking the viscosity of the ink. So you want to increase the frequency. You adjust the frequency. I've found that about every 15 to 30 minutes, the viscosity of the ink needs to be checked. And see now, if my operator is operating appropriately, that's a lot of work, especially on eight or 10 press. <coughs> Every 15 to 30 minutes, uh, this person's going to be checking eight colors. That's where I start to uh, have our, and not our I start to encourage my clients to consider how much time that is and whether or not they want an assistant to be there and do other functions when they ask those stories.